Starbucks, coffee? Go in the baptismal thing. Uh, <laughs> so I'm more awake this service than I was the last service from the, the cool lot. It is great to celebrate that. Great to uh, see uh, from young and, and different ages say, I'm going to confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. So what a, what a blessed day already. And it is a blessing to look with you in the book of uh, Ephesians. Thank you, Danny, for reading uh, some of that. Danny, start reading in Ephesians 4.17, where Paul is um, talking to the children. And he said, last week, you are a team. You are the body of Christ. Um, and you have all these gifts. And I'm giving those gifts to you that you now would be children of light, that you would take those gifts and you'd bring them into the midst of a dark world. Formerly you were Gentiles, formerly you were walking in darkness, but you've been taken out of the darkness. You've come to see the face of Jesus Christ, the light of Jesus Christ. You've turned your eyes upon Jesus. And now don't turn back. There's no, you remember that song, I have decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back, right? I says, Paul saying, there's no turning back. Why would you go back to the darkness? Stay in the light, be children of the light, and then gives us a whole list of things, uh, things to avoid, the dark things to avoid, and then things to put on, like forgiveness and love and, and, and all those good things, but get rid of bitterness and unforgiveness and unwholesome talk and sexual immorality and dark things. Get rid of those things and be children of the light. And I'm going to read, uh, begin reading at chapter 5, uh, verse 8. He goes on, he says, for you were once darkness, but now you are, and he says, oh, sorry, yes, stand. You were once darkness, but now you are light, not in yourselves, but light in who? In the Lord. So live as children of light. For the fruit of light consists, and these are attributes of God, consists in all goodness righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them, for it is shameful even to mention. Paul won't even mention it. It's so shameful. It's shameful to mention what the disobedient do in secret. They, they always do it behind closed doors. They do it in darkness. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. So when you come to Jesus, he begins to expose the darkness. Verse 14. For it is the light that makes everything visible. That is why it is said, wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every, not some, but every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Now here we find out what the Lord's will is for the children of light. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery or ruin. Instead be filled with the Spirit. And then notice this. This is how you prepare your heart for the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always, not sometimes, always give what? Thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now this is how it ends, and we'll pick up more on this next week, but it to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And Lord Jesus, we pray, speak to us in my weakness, Holy Spirit, come and speak the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. A lot here, a lot in this passage. And, and all the things that... Um, excuse me, Danny was reading, and how we we're to put off kind of the old nature and put on this new nature. And to be children of the light, to, to walk in the light, and to be children of the light. 
And Paul says the days that you and I are living in and the days that they were living in are dark days. They're evil days. And I think of the culture that you and I are living in, culture that our kids are growing up in, uh, evil days, dark days. But the challenge for the church is that you and I be points of light, right? Points of light. God has created you for a purpose, uh, not just to know him as Lord and Savior, that's huge, but also that you walk around this world lit up. That God's glory and God's radiance is shining through your light, your life with light and love. Wherever God leads you, you bring that light. What does that look like? What is the light that we are supposed to be, the children of light? What does it look like? And we see in chapter 5, this is what Danny was reading, verse 1. Here's what it looks like. Danny's version said followers, which is really a, a good translation. Mine says, the NIV says, be imitators. And the word comes from the Greek word, word mimic. When you mimic somebody, you you, you do exactly what they do, right? So be mimicking, be following God. Whatever God does, whatever God the Father does, exactly what Jesus did. Remember, Jesus says, I only do what I see my Father doing. So Paul is saying, mimic God, mimic the Father, therefore as dearly loved children. And here's how we mimic him. Live a life of what? Love, just as Christ loved us, gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. You want to break through the darkness. Wherever God is leading you, mimic your father who sent his son, his only son, and he loved you so much The Father loved you so much and Christ loved you so much that Christ served you. He gave himself up for you. And to the Father, it was a fragrant offering. The the Father was pleased with the sacrifice of love the Son gave. And so as children of the light, this is it. This is what we're to look like. We're to look like the Father. And the Father is so good, isn't he? The Father, if we start realizing how good our Father is, remember Satan really tries to distort our Father image. He does everything he can to distort you understanding the goodness of God. And some of us, he's distorted that through the homes we grew up in. Some of that, he just attacks us and says, you know, God isn't that good. God doesn't love me that way. Um, God doesn't care. But children of light encounter the love of God and they bring that love of the Father into the world. How do we do that? I look at my own heart and I look at the list and I I look at what is read there and and I look at bitterness and uh, bad talk and brawling and anger and unforgiveness and all that junk that wells even within my own heart and and I'm to be kind and compassionate and I am to mimic the father I am to mimic the father who gave his only son as a sacrifice of love and that's what's to come out of my heart and I know my heart how in the world can that happen well we come to an interesting verse in verse 18 that shows us how we're to be the children of light. This is, this is how it happens. Two ways. First a negative, then a positive. The negative. And it's in the Greek, it's, it's a present imperative. It's a command that, we're gonna, that we have to keep on avoiding. And it says, do not get drunk on what? Wine, which leads to debauchery. What are you talking about, Pastor Tim? How, how is this going to help me? How is this going to help me? And, and, and I think what Paul's de- dealing here is he's not saying don't drink wine. He's not saying that. right? He's not going to drink wine. He's not saying don't drink wine. But he's saying don't get intoxicated. The word there is intoxicated. And where he's using that as a symbol of the world. 
Don't be intoxicated by any outside force. And wine is an example, right? Don't get intoxicated by anything out there in the world. Don't, and you can pick your poison, right? It can be alcohol. It can be, it can be drugs. It, it can be pornography, right? That's huge in our day uh, with the Internet and uh, all the technology today. Um, it can be money uh, that, that we're being uh, controlled by money. That's probably the biggest idol in America is the land that has the most plenty is the most greedy and hoards the most. Uh, right in the church, right? We, we're, we're fearful. We, we worship money. Uh, it controls us. And Paul's saying, don't be intoxicated by the world. Don't go back. And it is interesting in um, Paul's day in Ephesus where there's this great temple to Diana. And the way that you would commune with Diana, one of the ways you would commune with her is you drink a whole lot of wine. And the way you communicate with Diana, this fertility goddess, is you got drunk. And you would fill yourself with this wine, and then they would have orgies. So nothing is new under the sun, right? You know, the god of sex, the god of wine, you know, filling yourself with external things. And so you would get into such a state with the orgies and the wine that, that you would open yourself up to the goddess Diana. How demonic. How demonic. And you and I live in a world that it looks a little different, but really it's the same thing. We'll, we'll go home and we'll watch football. Some of us will watch football. And, and every commercial, we'll have um, Coors Light or Bud Light. And, and if you drink enough of this, you're going to look really manly. Notice how all those guys look kind of manly. And you're going to have the girl, right? And nothing's changed. You serve you, you serve this God, and this God is going to bless you. And so Paul is saying, don't get sucked in by the intoxication of the world. Any outside force that controls your life, and that, that could be our kids. That can be pursuits of education and, and our jobs and relationships. My dad, when he, was, um, when, when he got sober from his battle with alcoholism, he was sharing this with me. He says, at age 17 was when the first time I got drunk. First time I, I, a guy, a friend from school, bought a cheap wine. We went in my 57 Chevy, and uh, I never drank before I drank, and, and, and it, it started to take some of the pain away. And it made me forget about some of my pain at home with, with his family. And, and uh, he says, you know, I was a very insecure person. And so when I drank, when I filled myself up, I became more courage. I had false courage, but, I, you know, I, I, was, I could get out on the dance floor and dance. Uh, I could, uh, you know, and so the, the more, and, and I learned that. I learned that at 17. It can take some of my pain away. Um, and, and it could curb it, and it could give me some false courage. And, and that is my dad, how he dealt with his pain and uh, intoxicated, uh, you know, get, but, but he says, you know, I always had to wake up the next day. And then there was more pain. And that's what that word there is, debauchery. It, it means ruin. You get intoxicated with the world, whatever it is, and it will never satisfy you. Never. You know, guys, we know the looking at pornography, right? And, and we all, you always have to do a little bit more, just, just a little bit more to be satisfied. And it's never enough. And money, right? Just a little bit more money and, and we get a little bit more and it's never enough. A little bit better grades. A little bit better athletics. And all this stuff, the world, and Paul says, don't do that. And, and here's how you don't do that. Because you can't do that on your own. I can't. My heart's too sinful. My heart's too broken. Your heart's too broken. Your heart's too sinful. The best of you can. So, so here's how 
Here's how we, we're going to be children like. He says, don't be drunk on wine, but what? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be intoxicated with the Holy Spirit. Interesting. So interesting. When the Holy Spirit filled the disciples at Pentecost, what did the people in the community think happened to Peter, James, and John? What, what did he think? They got drunk. They thought, you're drunk, right? You're you're intoxicated, the word is used. You 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 guys are acting so crazy, you must be drunk. And Peter says, no, 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 it's nine in the morning, guys. We don't drink that early, right? Interesting parallel. The disciples are filled with the Holy Spirit. Culture thinks they're drunk. Man, We should be so full of the Holy Spirit that culture thinks we're drunk. Amen? Because we should be filled with so much joy through the Holy Spirit that culture says, what is up with those people? I was talking to a college student not long ago, and this college student was saying to me, people on my campus, the campus where I go to college, they, they think I'm always high. They're asking me, are you high? Are you on something? Be, because she is a believer. She believes in Jesus Christ. So she walks around her college campus and people think she's high. And she tells them, no, I, I, I'm in Jesus, right? And, and that's, the world needs to see Christians drunk with Jesus. Now, now how, and this, that is a command, right? That, how does this happen? How, how are, you know, and, and first of all, what are some reasons why? First of all, it's a command. You are commanded to be drunk with Jesus. Amen? You are commanded. It is a present imperative in the Greek. Present imperative means it's a command. Present means you are to do it continually. You are to continually be drunk with Jesus Christ and his spirit living in you. That is a command. You do not have a choice. You do not have a choice but to be drunk with Jesus. Paul's saying that is a command. Why do we need to be the spirit? It is a command. Uh, and, and, And the disciples knew that. Jesus says, don't do ministry without being filled with the Holy Spirit. Wait. Don't try to, can you imagine if the church would do that? Can you imagine if the church of Jesus Christ would say, we're not going to do anything. We're not going to do our programs. We're not going to do night in Bethlehem. We're not going to do anything until first we know that we're bubbling over with Jesus. And we're going to wait, we're going to wait until we are just bubbling over with Jesus Christ. Because if we don't, we're going to do it in our flesh. And when we do it in our flesh, there's going to be a lot of mixed stuff going on. And we're not doing it for the right reasons. We need to do it because we are compelled by Christ. Jesus did not do ministry until he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus, the only way Jesus heard the Father, the only way Jesus did all the miracles, all the good stuff, he only did it through the Holy Spirit. He didn't, he didn't take his divinity and say, now I'm going to be divine and I'm going to act out of my divinity. No, Jesus, in his, even though he was divine, he emptied himself and says, I'm going to act out of humanity, therefore I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So if Jesus needed the Holy Spirit, the disciples, how much more do we? It's a command. And the next reason is because we, the conviction of the Father's love. Uh, The Holy Spirit ministers to that, the place my dad tried to fill with alcohol. Because his dad, my my grandpa, and he did the best he could because his dad, uh, the way he was raised, uh, you never showed affection to your kids. If you showed affection to your kids, you're going to make them weak, right? Right? That, that's how my great-grandpa grandma was raised and his grandpa was raised. So my dad never got affection from his earthly. My, my dad was a great athlete. Um, my grandma couldn't come to his games because she had to work. She worked at Sears in a factory. Uh, my grandpa just, just never came. 
Never, never to one. I, I read my dad's press clippings, and my dad was a really good basketball player. His dad never seen him play. So, so, so my dad covered up that father wound with alcohol, and he, and he drank it away, the pain away, right? And we all have a father wound because we are created to be in a right relationship with God the Father, but sin somehow got there. And what the Holy Spirit does, what he does is he brings us back to Ephesians 3, that prayer, and he shows us how wide, how deep, how long is the Father's love. Kathy, wasn't that so cool that... Beth Moore spoke to you in your Beth Moore Bible, right? Is it a Beth Moore Bible? Devotional. Uh, hard week for the Vanderteg family. Hard week. Uh, Kathy's mom had to have brain surgery. She, Harley's here. They're visiting. Um, supposed to be back in Indiana. She would have gone to Indiana with the bleeding on the brain. She would not be here today. So praise God. But, but a hard week in the hospital um, for the whole family. And 